Have you ever wanted to play EU4 but don't actually have the game or you're missing out on a couple of important DLCs? Boy do I have an offer for you. Right now Humble Bundle is running a sale on EU4 The Complete Collection where you can get EU4 and every single DLC except for Origins for just $20. That's right, a $415 value for just $20. Boys, don't miss this offer. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity offer to get EU4 and every single DLC for just $20. You can choose between Steam or Epic Games keys. I know lots of you guys have EU4 for free on Epic Games, so you can choose between whatever you want to, and you can get every single DLC and the base game, except for Origins, for just $20, man. This is insane. Honestly, man, this is a great way to support wonderful charities and the channel itself, too. You can adjust your donation right here. You can see where every single dollar goes. 12 bucks to Paradox, 1 to Charity, 4 to Humble, 3 to me. Hey, you can give extra to Charity, or you can even choose a custom amount. Give all of your money to Paradox, give all of your money to a charity, give all of your money to Humble Bundle, and you can even give all of your money to me. Like I said, it's an awesome way to support the channel as well, and it's an awesome some way for you guys to get EU4 and every single DLC for just $20. This is the best trade deal in the history of trade deals, maybe ever. So check out the link in the description or in the pinned comment and head on to Humble Bundle and get EU4 and every single DLC except for Origins for just $20. And you can choose to support an awesome charity or the channel or both. Now back to the video. Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide for Castile for EU4 1.33 France. So Castile is a nation located in the Iberian Peninsula. It is one of the most powerful nations at the start of the game in 1444 and as such it is also one of the most popular nations at the start of the game in 1444. Castile is a nation which would go on to historically form Spain and that's exactly what we're going to be doing with the help of our insane mission tree that's going to get even bigger when we form Spain and our superb national ideas which you could even keep instead of the Spanish ones although both the Castilian and Spanish Spanish national ideas are super super powerful, of course, for different things. We're gonna be PUing Aragon, we're gonna be PUing Naples, we're gonna be PUing Portugal, expanding in the Maghreb, expanding in Italy, and even getting a few other personal unions which won't be part of our mission tree. And of course, we'll be colonizing the entire world with Castile, the coasts of Africa, India, Southeast Asia, and the New World as well. And before we begin, if you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like, it really helps out a lot. And if you wanna see more guides or more U4 videos in general, definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. Let's take a look at what we need to do as Castile. So first off, right at the start, you may remember in previous guides that we have disinherited our horrible heir here, Enrique, who's a 0, 0, 0 and our ruler isn't much better than him with a 1, 1, 2. Both of these guys suck and we do want to get rid of them, but we're not going to be disinheriting Enrique just yet. And we're also not going to be abdicating either just yet. We will be doing that shortly in about six years to be exact. So don't disinherit these guys right at the start, even though many guides suggest that. So first, we are going to go into our estates and summon the diet. You can pick whichever agenda is best for you. Then we're going to give the clergy religious state, clerical advisory council, and religious diplomats. We're going to give the nobility primacy of the nobility, increased levies, and aristocratic counselors. And we're going to give the burghers land of commerce, patronage of the arts, commercial advisory board, and indebted to the burghers. Then we're gonna seize land. Our economy at the start is pretty good. We are making a decent amount of income and we do also start off with a gold mine over here in La Mancha. Now we won't focus super, super hard on deving it, like using all the diplo points for that, but you will wanna get it up to 10 in the first 10 or so years, I would say. But now it is time to hire some advisors. Get whichever level one admin advisor you have, preferably an inflation reduction level one guy, Mine's a level 2, so I am going to get this tax guy. Get a Diplo rep or improve relations level 1 guy if you have him. I don't, so I'm just going to get this trade efficiency guy. And get a morale or discipline level 1 mill advisor. I do have a discipline guy, so I will take him. Now it's time for some alliances. The nations we do want to ally are Burgundy, Austria, and the Pope. Those are the three most important guys we want to get. The Pope not being so important, but Burgundy and Austria are a must in my opinion. We're not going to be allying Portugal. 
not gonna be allying France, not gonna be allying England. And if Aragon is actually friendly towards you, you can ally them as well since they'll take up a Diplo slot anyway, so why not get that out of the way? But if you can't ally Aragon, it's totally not a problem and it's not necessary. But there we go, I am gonna send an alliance offer to Burgundy and I'm gonna improve with Austria until I can Royal marry them and ally them as well. And once a day passes, I will ally the Pope too. We will also start improving relations and Royal marrying, allying and everything else that we need to vassalize Navarra. So we're gonna ally them, proclaim a guarantee, Royal marry them, offer military access, influence them, send them a gift, anything that we can do to get them to accept a diplomatic vassalization as soon as possible. I'm gonna start off by improving relations with them and then once the diplomat is free I'm gonna do everything else. Now it's time for rivalries as well and we are gonna rival France that is the most important nation we want to rival and we want to make sure that both us and Austria rival France which is happening in my case and then you can rival whoever else you want to. I'm gonna rival Morocco here and England why not. We can also delete the fort in Burgos over here because Navarra is gonna get a level 3 fort as soon as we vassalize them and this is 133 so they might even build one before that but now it's time to chill get all these alliances in order and wait for the truce with granada to expire in 1448 meanwhile you can also tell these six light ships to protect trade in sevilla and go home during war and it's time to select our naval doctrine we won't be taking grand armada just yet because we don't have treasure fleets so i do recommend free oarsmen for galley combat ability right at the start it'll help us fight the maghrebi nations and we'll be swapping between this this and this throughout the game. And you can also bring your both of your armies into Lido to reorganize them and send this main fleet down here. We'll also start building some galleys to help us fight the Maghrebi nations. There we go, I started building 10 in each of the available provinces. Don't ally Portugal. We're not gonna be allying Portugal, just let them be, do whatever they want, we're gonna PU them later. So I am gonna reject this alliance offer and accept the one from Navarra. And there we go, a month has passed and I have allied the Pope and Austria as well. Austria were immediately willing to accept my alliance even though I didn't really improve with them. Another thing you want to make sure you do is do not accept the royal marriage offer from Burgundy. This will make us ineligible for the Burgundian succession because when their guy dies, that royal marriage breaks. So don't accept a royal marriage from Burgundy. Instead, you should send a royal marriage offer to them. Of course, I am going to accept the royal marriage offer from Navarra. And once this guy is back, I'm going to do everything else like guarantee them and all the other stuff I set. It's already at 150 as we can see in my case. It just ticked over and it'll be pretty easy to diplo vassalize them. I did forget to select free horsemen, so I'm going to do that right now. And by this point, your diplomatic situation should look a little something like this. Burgundy, Austria, the Pope, and we're improving with Navarra and stuff like that. We've already allied them and you might have Aragon depending on if they're friendly towards you or not. In my case, they're not, but like I said, if they're friendly, ally them. And there we go, it's April 1445, so it's been almost five or six months since the start of the game, and I can already diplo vassalize Navarra. All I did was ally and royal marry them, improve with them, guarantee them, offer them military access, and I just sent a gift to them of 25 ducats. And now as soon as a month passes, I'll be able to diplo vassalize them. And there we go, a month has passed and we can do that. You do want to make sure you do this quickly because they will fall under a PU under Aragon pretty soon. And we don't want to have them as a junior partner as well when we get Aragon because let's face it, having a one province miner for 50 years taking up a diplomatic slot is not that worth it. Whereas like this, we're simply going to annex them after 10 years. When our boats are done, take them all down to this main fleet right here with the heavies and the transports. At this point, almost everything is into place. Our alliances have been secured, Royal married and allied to these three guys and possibly Aragon. Our fleet is done, four heavies, ten galleys, pretty strong, and our armies are just chilling, and we're waiting for the truce with Granada to expire. I have already started devving up La Mancha, I have bumped it up to five by this point. So now we're just waiting for the truce. At this point, my diplomats are just improving with my allies, nothing special. Once about a year is left from this truce, as we can see it's February 1447, so we got a year left, it is time to complete the final part of the Prepare Reconquista mission where we need to have our manpower at 60%, which in my case is 60% of 31,000, which should be around 18,000. We do need to have a general, which is good. We do start off with Alvaro de Luna over here. We need our navy to be 100% of our force limit, which it is because we built up the galleys, and we need our army to be 100% of the force limit as well. So we don't have the first one and the fourth one. And here's how we're gonna deal with them. Since we're gonna be hiring mercenary companies anyway, our professionalism will drop once we do those things. So at this point, I do recommend slackening 
maintain recruiting standards at least once. And then you can go and check if you're at 60%. I am. So I only need to slacken once. If you're not at 60% yet after slackening once, you can slacken again. As you can see, our professionalism did drop, but we did gain manpower. And now to buff up our force limit, we just need 10 more regiments. So I do recommend hiring the free company. In my case, it'll give me six. There we go. So I just need four more regiments. And in that case, I will destroy one cavalry unit from this smaller army right here. Of course, this will drop our manpower, but we can slacken again. So that's why you will in fact have to slacken twice. And there we go, I'll slacken again. And there we go, once your army looks a little something like this. So we got the main army, who's a 16-4 right here the free company and the secondary army who's in 6-2, we will take the mission prepare Reconquista. It gives us a permaclaim on Navarra, which we already have, and permaclaims on Granada, which we will get soon. At this point, you can take the mission Subjugate Navarra, where Navarra gets a castle in their province and local defensiveness, and we get a restoration of Union CB on Portugal. Don't take it. We're not PUing Portugal yet. The right time to PU Portugal is after they've taken exploration ideas, which is gonna be in about 10 or 15 years. So don't PU Portugal yet. If you PU them now, they won't take exploration and expansion and they won't colonize for you so we're saving this mission for later and we're still waiting for the truce with granada and there we go once the truce with granada is up it is time to declare on them so i have my main army right here the secondary army and the free company right here and in my case since they're allied to morocco and tunis i won't be taking out my navy because their three navies combined are stronger than me of course in 1.33 you won't even have to fight morocco and tunis you can just full occupy granada and after a certain amount of time they'll unconditionally surrender which means you can full annex them of course if you're allied to Aragon at this point, I'm not, you can pop out your navies, Aragon will come to help, and you can even go and siege down Morocco and Tunis. So it is time to declare on them for the conquest of Granada. At this point, you can give your air military command, Enrique right here, merge the free company to the secondary army and go siege the other fort. Like I said, I'm not going to be taking my navy out. And there we go. I full occupied Granada. And like I said earlier, because this is 1.33, I don't even have to go and siege down Morocco and Tunis. Granada will just unconditionally surrender. It will take a while, but it will save you the manpower and trouble of sieging down all of Morocco's super, super annoying forts, like the one in Fez, especially. So. I'm just gonna sit right here, loot up their provinces, and chill until they unconditionally surrender. At this point, you can also start spying on Tlemcen, if they still exist, of course. During this war, you can transfer occupation of these forts to your subject Navarra to save some money. Now, once 1450 comes around, it is time to disinherit Enrique right here. Why did we wait for 1450? Well, that's because the event Isabel of Castile, which is a scripted heir that we can get as Castile, is only eligible to fire after 1450. And because she appears as a 23-year-old heir, we can immediately abdicate with Juan right here as well once we get her since she will be of age whereas if we did this the classic route by disinheriting enrique and getting a zero aged heir we would still have to wait quite a lot to abdicate with juan right here so once 1450 comes around now we're gonna disinherit enrique if you do get a different heir other than the Isabel event, it's totally fine. This is just an increased chance of us getting that event rather than a regular heir. Now, I did manage to white piece Tunis since they were having some rebel problems, and now is the right time to pop out my navy because I can beat Granada and Morocco's navy by myself. Of course, with Tunis, I couldn't do that. So, of course, I am gonna hire an admiral first and then pop it out. And there we go, some time has passed, and Granada did unconditionally surrender. It's been about five years since the start of the war, so I'll simply transfer back occupation of these two fort provinces to myself and it is time to full annex granada you might want to check if you can white piece their allies so you don't create of as big of a truce with them as you will with granada technically if they existed so if you can't just full annex them and take all their money and that's our first war done. Now we own all of Granada, and we are eligible to take this mission as well. It also gives us a restoration of Union CB on Portugal. So don't take either of these missions. I don't know if it's the same CB from both, or if it refreshes when you take another mission. So just to be safe, don't take either of these yet. But now that we've finished with Granada, it is time to chill just a little bit before declaring our next war, which is gonna be versus one of these three nations right here, Morocco, Tlemcen, or Tunis, most likely versus Tlemcen, because we are spying on them, as I said earlier. At this point, I have devved up La Mancha to 10 as well, and it has been almost exactly 10 years since the start of the game. 
game. So I wasn't in that big of a hurry, but I did do it. At this point, I did also just decrease autonomy in all of my provinces. Now at this point, if you still don't have an heir like me, the Castilian Civil War disaster may start ticking. And honestly, it's not a very bad disaster. You can just let it fire. And I did just get an heir. He's Enrique once again, but a 545. So I will keep him instead of disinheriting this guy again for the Isabel event. The Isabel event is pretty good because you also get a female ruler, which increases the chances of the Iberian wedding firing earlier. But this guy's really good. I'm happy with him. I am gonna take him. For your tier 2 government reform, you should of course take strength and noble privileges. Now, my ruler did just die, the original guy, and I got the queen right here, Maria de Trastamara. She's not that good either, <laughs> slightly better than the other guy. But this does make the Iberian Wedding eligible. So the only thing we need for the Iberian Wedding to happen, which is the event where we gain Aragon as a junior partner, is for one of these two nations to have a male ruler, which Aragon does, and one of these two nations to have a female ruler, which Castile does in my case. So it is eligible to fire. You don't need them to be the same dynasty. You don't need them to be the Trastamaras. You just need one of them to have a male and the other one to have a female. Basically, a king and a queen. So now it is eligible to fire. Of course, it may not have happen right away, but it can fire. Once again, I did just get a royal marriage offer from Burgundy. I won't accept this. Instead, I'll send my own. And in fact, even they don't have an heir here with Charles on the throne, which means the Burgundian succession is also eligible to happen if Charles here dies. There we go. Just as I was fighting some noble rebels, the Iberian wedding did fire, which is actually super quick. Pretty surprising to me, but it's not unusual that you get it during this point, since around this time, King Juan over here also dies, and that's when most people will get it. But I got it now. 1457, a pretty standard period to get it. I I would say. So, of course, you will select let us bind their dynasty to ours. It doesn't matter if you get Aragon now or later, they won't influence what we do too much. You'll still be doing the same things I do with them whenever you get it. It doesn't have to be now. Once you do get Aragon as a junior partner, you will be able to take the mission claims in Aragon as well, which gives you different things depending on what Aragon has done. So if Aragon still has Naples as a junior partner, of course, you will get Naples as a junior partner too. But if Aragon have abandoned Naples, which does happen around 95% of the time, I would say, then you'll also get a restoration of Union CB on Naples and perma claims on the stuff that they already own, as well as some Aragon stuff. Now, the first thing you want to do before taking this mission is to check who Naples is allied to because they can sometimes ally strong nations. But in my case, they've only allied Epirus and Provence, which is perfect. That means I can totally attack them right away. Usually the strongest nation I see them ally is someone like Austria, but luckily that hasn't happened in my case. If that's also the same situation in your case, then you can totally take the mission claims in Aragon right away and get that restoration of Union CB on Naples, which means we'll be going to PU them pretty soon. Of course, if you haven't gotten Aragon yet, and if you don't have this mission just yet, and you're not going to PU Naples, your second war should be versus the nation of Clemson, however big they are, or whoever pretty much controls these provinces right here. So it could be Morocco or Tunis, depending on your situation. But my next war is gonna be versus Naples, and my third war is gonna be versus Clemson. Of course, before you declare on Naples, you will wanna take all your troops down to Messina. And there we go, now that my entire army is down in Sicily and my fleet is in the Straits of Messina with the ability to allow friendly ships to attach, it is time to declare on Naples with the restoration of Union CB. Of course, like I said earlier, this is gonna depend on who they're allied to and it's also gonna depend on when you get Aragon. It doesn't matter if you don't get them as early as me, you'll still be doing this whenever you can. I will call in Burgundy here to help me with Provence. And there we go, a super, super simple war versus Naples. All I had to do was occupy Naples and Provence's capital, and that's done. You only need about 60% war score, so of course you are going to select a union with Naples in the peace deal and take all of their money. Since Naples is small, you won't get that much aggressive expansion, and it won't be a problem at all. And there you go, once you get Aragon, you immediately fight for Naples as well, or maybe you got super lucky and you automatically got Naples because Aragon kept their PU over them. Now it's time for me to shift my focus back to the Maghreb and fight these nations. If you're not doing this, you will be fighting these nations already. Once you do have Naples, or if you immediately got them, you will be able to take the mission Italian Ambition, which gives us some naval bonuses and perma claims on areas in Northern Italy, specifically Tuscany, Lombardy, and the Po Valley. We will be pushing into Italy a 
although slowly since these are high def provinces and aggressive expansion will be very high and of course if you did this way earlier than me don't start pushing into Italy just yet not until these guys leave the HRE of course once 10 years have passed you should start annexing Navarra but make sure you give the nobility the nobility integration policy before you do that. And once you're ready, it is time to declare on Tlemcen, or if they don't exist, Morocco or Tunis, in my case it is Tlemcen, I will be declaring on them for the conquest of Dara. Now, the Duke of Burgundy just died, and I did get the Burgundian inheritance, which is actually super, super lucky. That is why we wanted to ally Burgundy, that is why we wanted to royal marry them. But something that's more important than this is actually the royal marriage and alliance with Austria and our rivalries to France. Now, let me explain this. Of course, you know what happens when we get the Burgundian succession. It seems that Burgundy has lost Holland in my case, but it's not a big deal. It's still super, super powerful that we got them but here's the deal you probably won't get them they'll probably pick austria that is the option they go with the most often now the reason we wanted to roll mary and ally austria is because of the strategic marriage event. Now that event can happen when we don't have an heir and both us and Austria are rivaled to France. Then Austria can ask us to put a Habsburg heir on our throne. Now when you do get that event, you do want to accept to have a Habsburg on your dynasty. So you wanna flip out of the trust Amaras and get the Habsburgs. That is because later when Austria gets the Burgundian inheritance, they can simply give you the lowlands because you have a Habsburg. I think it's something like that. Or if you haven't gotten the strategic marriage event already, I think it's called a very strategic marriage or something like that, where they offer to give you the lowlands in exchange for accepting a Habsburg on the throne. So it is more important actually to Royal Mary Austria rather than Burgundy because this right here is just luck, right? It's basically luck if you get Burgundy or not. But there is a super high chance of you getting the Lowlands if you accept those events for the Habsburgs from Austria. So this is super, super great in my case. And even though I got Burgundy this early, it won't influence anything I do further in this guide because it doesn't matter if you have Burgundy or not in the early game because in the early game, we're primarily concerned with Italy and the Maghreb, something we don't need Burgundy. Four. But like I said, the most important thing is those royal marriages and those strategic marriages events with Austria rather than getting the Burgundian inheritance. Of course, you know how it works. Once Charles dies and they have a weak claim heir or Marie, they pick to become a junior partner under Austria, France, someone else they married or remain independent. In my case, they picked me. But in your case, they'll most likely pick Austria. And they do have some pretender rebels here, which I'm going to have to go deal with immediately. And there we go. In my case, Clemson has unconditionally surrendered and I've also full occupied them and in this war versus Clemson of course if they're intact the most important things to take are their coastal provinces and their capital of Clemson right here of course if you can you are gonna full annex them and even if they're smaller than this that's better because you'll still be full annexing them and that's our war versus Clemson done like I said earlier this might have been your second war if you haven't fought Naples or someone like that but of course everything that's in the Safi and Tunis trade nodes with the exception of the area of Tafilalt right here we are gonna be trade companying so simply click on the Safi trade node and add every province to the trade company. And then you can just remove these other ones like this one, which is in the Tafilalt area. By adding these provinces to a trade company, we not only mitigate the religious unity we get from them. Basically, we don't get a religious unity penalty from these provinces, but we also increase trade. And we do want to do that in the Safi and Tunis trade nodes. So we're going to be trade companying everything in these two trade nodes. Alternatively, you can also release nations down here, such as Algier, for example. Although I don't think it's that much worth it since they don't have that many cores. Now in my case we can see that Portugal have picked up exploration ideas which means this is the perfect time to take these missions which give us a restoration of Union CB on them. But because I PU'd Naples just a bit ago and I fought Clemson as well, AE is decently high. At least with these guys which doesn't matter too much but I'll still chill for like a year or two before I PU Portugal. And you will most likely be PUing Portugal as well in the 1460s or 1470s. That's around the time they get exploration and that's around the time you get done doing other stuff. Now, of course, if you do get Burgundy, Austria might pick the demand of the low countries from you. Basically, every HRE province that Burgundy owns will be released into the HRE. And of course, you are going to deny this if it happens. Austria might not declare a war on you if you're allied or if you have a truce with them. But even if they're allied, they still might. So be careful with that. Of course, you are going to want to keep the provinces, like I said. While the incident is going on, you can check on what Austria is voting by going into the HRE interface and hovering 
over their decisions, which will be located here. As we can see, the event already ended in my case. For your first idea group, Ask a Steel, you are of course gonna go with exploration ideas. Is there another option, Ask a Steel? I don't think so. It's very rare for a player not to colonize when playing Ask a Steel. Alternatively, yes, you can not pick this because Portugal will colonize for you either way once you PU them. But of course, our first idea group will be exploration ideas. After this, we are also going to focus on depth. Of course, once you take the first idea from exploration ideas, you will want to take your light ship fleet, which is probably six ships by now, and split it. And you're going to tell these three other light ships to go home, and we're going to recruit an explorer for them. Of course, once you do hire an explorer for these three light ships, you're simply going to tell them to explore. And now that some time has passed, I am ready to take the mission, which gives me a PUCB on Portugal. Like I said only do this after they've taken exploration if they take an exploration they'll take expansion too but don't pu them before they take this so i'm gonna take this mission right here boom there we go i did get a castle in navora and i've gotten a pucb on portugal i just need to wait for it to refresh and i just took this mission to reclaim andalusia which once again gives me a pucb on portugal and we get this event the fate of the kingdom of granada now we can expel all of the granadian moriscos basically change the religion of all these provinces but we do also lose two stability or we gain stab and we can simply convert them later by using various edicts advisors and stuff like that i would recommend picking this option we'll convert it later and now i'll also be declaring a restoration of union war on portugal they will probably only be allied to england it doesn't matter who they're allied to since you will have aragon and naples either way before declaring on them. Of course, I need to wait a bit more since I have a Regency Council, I just realized that, so I guess it's time for me to chill two more years. For your first stage ability, I recommend taking Justified Wars. You won't be colonizing as early as you'll get the first stage ability. So this one for your first one, and this one for your second one. And now that my Regency has ended, I will finally be declaring this war. Once you do get your first colonist from Exploration Ideas, it is time to choose a native policy before we go colonizing. And of course, I recommend this one, the native coexistence policy, if you want to just sit back, relax, and let your colonies do themselves, or for a more active style of colonization, where you'll need to go send an army to deal with rebels, and of course colonize a bit faster, you can choose native repression. I do recommend native coexistence, and then once we get expansion as well, and the policy that goes along with exploration and expansion, we can simply swap over to native trading. But I do recommend this one since I like to chill and not think about my colonies while they're building. And the first province that I recommend you colonize is the province of Cape Verde. When pewing Portugal, try to avoid fighting their ships. We do want to keep their navy intact so they can go do their own thing. And there we go. All I need is about 55% war score. I haven't even occupied anything England owns except for the province of Calais up here and I can simply pew Portugal. That's all we want to do. Union with Portugal as much money as you can and that's it. Now we also have Portugal as a junior partner. By this point, 1470s, you You've already gotten the Iberian Wedding for sure, and you've restored Naples, and by now you might also be pewing Portugal. This is of course just a bonus, not something we're going for, not something that the guide relies on. So don't worry about Burgundy at all. But this is sort of what your game should look like by now. Now it's time to chill a little bit and continue our expansion in the Maghreb, colonize as well, and maybe even start pushing into Italy. Because by now, the Italian nations, or most of them, the ones that aren't allied to Austria, have left the HRE. Once you get the stuff in Tlemcen, you can start spying on Morocco to get some stuff from them. For your third government reform, you should take Centralized Bureaucracy or Council of the Indies. This one is pretty good. You get global tariffs on your colonial nations and and even more treasure fleet income. This 20% paired with the naval ability of Grand Armada grants you plus 70% treasure fleet income. Of course, you might not care about treasure fleets that much because you will be dominating trade and trade is way more powerful than treasure fleets. So it really is up to you whether you take Council of the Indies or centralized bureaucracy. I'm gonna go with Council of the Indies myself. Now that I've gotten a few claims on Morocco, I'll be declaring on them. During this point, you will be pushing into the Maghreb or in Italy. It's up to you. And it's a great opportunity for me because they've broken their alliance with Tunis, so I'll declare for Tangier. When your burghers become more loyal than influential, you should revoke one of these privileges so you can give out another one. Personally, I am going to take away commercial advisory board from them, 
which is the Diplo Advisor Cost Reduction one, and instead I'm gonna give them New World Charters. This is for faster colonization. And of course, we can still make use of the Indebted to the Burgers privilege when we pay off our loans, get them again, pay them off, get them again, you know how it is. For your second idea group, Ask a Steal, of course, you're gonna go with Expansion Ideas next. And once you have about 60 to 70% War Score versus Morocco, I do recommend piecing out. And in this first War versus Morocco, I recommend that you take these four coastal provinces right here, here, which are basically part of the North Morocco area, along with the super annoying fort in Fez, along with war reps and all their money. You can humiliate them too if they're your rival. In my case, they're not. And that's our first war with Morocco done. Maybe you fought Tunis, in which case you've taken some of these provinces right here. Don't forget to add everything here to a trade company as well. You can technically trade company these provinces right here too, which are in the Sevilla trade node because they're in a different subcontinent, but I don't recommend that you trade company North Morocco. I recommend that you state it instead. Now that I'm done with Morocco as well, it is time to open up an expansion route in Italy as well. And you will be doing this, of course, once you've gotten Aragon, Naples, and Portugal, you will be shifting your conquests between the Maghreb and Italy, of course, if you haven't pushed into coastal Africa yet. So it is time to look for whichever of these nations right here is the easiest to fight. Milan and Mantua are of course inland so you will have to vassalize them or something like that venice is looking pretty strong let's see siena here they're allied to venice and bologna florence is allied to france so that's a no-no and luca is allied to genoa the pope and savoy and the pope won't even join actually so in my case right here luca is the easiest nation to fight and you'll fight whichever one of these guys is the easiest so i'll just call in austria and declare and let my subjects do all the work while I sit back and relax in Iberia. Of course, you may not be fighting Tunis or Morocco in your case if one of them or both of them are allied to the Ottomans. In my case, I did get lucky with Morocco, but Tunis is allied to the Ottomans, which is gonna be super, super annoying. Ideally, I would have made them break this alliance in the war versus Morocco if they were still allied, but it seems that I'm not gonna be fighting Tunis this early in my game. You may be doing it in yours though. I did forget to mention this earlier, but don't forget to add provinces in the Ivory Coast trade node to trade companies as well. Cape Verde is in the Ivory Coast, so we should do that. Once you get your second colonist from Expansion Ideas, you are going to want to check your colonial range map mode and see where you can go and colonize. We've already started Africa with this first colonist, so the second one is going to go to the New World. And let's see in the economic map modes, this is where we can go, these three provinces right here. And if we go into the geographic map modes, we can see the colonial and trade regions and see that this is in Colonial Colombia. So that's going to be the first nation we're going to focus on establishing. Obviously, Portugal is already working on the Caribbean, as we can see. So I'm going to let them do their thing over there. And meanwhile, I'm going to colonize some of these provinces right here. So first colonist in Africa, the second one in South America. And now that I've defeated Luca here, I will be annexing them and taking all their money. It's as a coalition will form, but that's not really true. And the aggressive expansion will be pretty low, at least when fighting them. And there we go. Now we've opened up another expansion route, aside from Naples, because it is blocked off by the Pope into Italy. We will leave the Pope alive. We don't really care about his provinces. But there you go. Once you get a province, most likely in the Tuscan area, you will have lots of options to push through from there. Once you colonize a province in the New World, since we're not really going for Tenerife and Portugal will probably have it before us, you will be able to take the mission plus ultra, which gives you colonial range. And you've probably discovered the Caribbean by now, which means you can also take this mission right here. We gain some global settler increase. And if Portugal or you have established a colony in the Caribbean, you'll also be able to take the mission Caribbean colony for even more settler chance. Once you start colonizing this province right here, you can of course also start spying on whoever owns some of these provinces over here. It might be one nation, it might be two, in my case, it's Jolof, so I will start spying on them. Around this time, you may also want to start spying on France to get a claim on the province of Bordeaux. And in my case, France is a junior partner of Provence. <laughs> I guess uh, I guess I'll be spying on Provence then. Once you finally manually convert the area of Upper Andalusia, you will be able to take the mission Convert Iberia. You gain further perma claims on stuff you may already have in Morocco and Malta as well. It's pretty easy to convert it with some events that you get from the Pope being friendly. Once you take that decision from Admin Tech Six and with enabling enforced religious unity right here, you could also hire a missionary strength advisor too. 
it won't take too long. Once your colony over here is finished, you are of course going to keep sending the first colonists to colonize in Africa, preferably in the centers of trade first. And of course, in the furthest province that you can reach, which is this one right here, the Gold Coast or the Cape Coast in my case. So I am going to send them to the Gold Coast. Once you've built up claims on whoever owns these provinces right here, it's time to start pushing into Africa militarily as well. So I am going to be declaring on Jolov, even though they're allied to Jene and Timbuktu, these nations are technologically inferior and will be able to easily crush them. So it's time to declare on whoever owns these coastal provinces. Once your first colony in South America finishes, make sure to keep sending that same colonist in the same colonial and trade region. So once you send a guy to Colombia, don't send him to Brazil then. Or if you send him to Brazil, don't send him to Argentina after that. You want to establish five provinces so a colonial nation can form. So go into the geographical map modes, go into the colonial and trade regions, and keep sending him to the same colonial region, which is colonial Colombia in my case. And make sure to look for centers of trade as well. In my case, I can't see any. The only one right here is already owned by a nation. So I'll just send this guy right next to the colony we established. And once you get enough war score versus whoever you're fighting here to take only their provinces in the Ivory Coast trade node, it's time to peace out. We don't care about the inland provinces, the one in the Timbuktu trade node. Sure, there are gold provinces here, but like I said in my last Portugal guide, you don't really care about gold when you're gonna have all that trade. So with Jolov here, I'm simply gonna peace out for these provinces which are in the Ivory Coast trade node. That's it. I don't care about anything else. At this point, I've also been spying on Kabu here, and I'll declare for this province right here, and this one right here, soon enough. Of course, make sure to keep adding all of these provinces to the trade company. Once you become the strongest power in the Ivory Coast trade node, you will be able to take the mission West African ports. It gives you some mercantilism. And there we go, I'll immediately be declaring on Kabu right here to take the rest of the provinces in the Ivory Coast trade node. You may be fighting just one nation for all of these provinces up here, or you may be fighting two, three, or even four. What matters most is getting the Ivory Coast provinces. And that's another super quick and easy war where I'm gonna take these two provinces, basically full annexing them, but once again caring most about the Ivory Coast provinces. Once you fight a little in West Africa, you can head back to Europe if you're of course interested in Europe at all. You may not want to do that and that is totally your choice where I recommend that you fight France. And in that war versus France, you should take some of these provinces over here in the Valencia trade node and feed them to Aragon and take Bordeaux as well to pop out Gascony to do a reconquest for their cores later. But of course, if you're not interested in Europe, you totally don't have to mess with France at all. And by around the 1490s, your game should look a little something like this. Basically, we started off Ask a Steel with the classic War versus Granada, where we took over these provinces from them, and then continued our expansion towards the Maghreb while waiting for the Iberian Wedding to happen, where we could get Aragon as a junior partner. After you got Aragon as a junior partner, you either got lucky by getting Naples as well, but if not, you enforced your PU over Naples as well, and with that you had Aragon and Naples. After that, you continued your expansion in the Maghreb once again, and maybe even into Italy too, if the Italian nations had left the HRE by that point, like I said, don't fight these guys if they're still in the HRE, and after that you waited for Portugal to get exploration ideas so you can take those missions and PU Portugal as well, and by this point you have your main subjects, Portugal, Aragon, and Naples, and you might even have gotten Burgundy if you were lucky, or if you were also a little bit lucky, you might have gotten the Low Countries directly if Austria got the Burgundian succession. Of course, while all of this was happening, we were developing our gold mine in La Mancha up to 10, taking exploration and expansion ideas, and we started our colonization in Africa and in South America as well. In Africa, of course, jumping to the furthest provinces that we can. I'm right here next to Congo right now. This is the province of colonizing. And in the New World, we're establishing one colonial nation at a time, either by colonizing or or through taking an army directly there, fighting some natives, and establishing colonies rapidly in each of the colonial and trade regions like Colombia, Brazil, La Plata, Peru, Mexico, and the Caribbean. Speaking of these colonial and trade regions, those are the only ones you really care about if you don't care about Europe. Of course, all of these northern ones in North America, they divert their trade towards the English Channel trade node, which we're not really present in right now since I do have Burgundy in my case, but I'm not directly there still. 
You might be directly there though, if Austria gave you the Low Countries. Either way, focus on everything south of the Rio Grande trade node and on everything south of the colonial Mexico region. Like I said, you're gonna establish Colombia, then you're gonna establish Brazil, maybe Portugal's working on the Caribbean. If that's the case, you'll leave them to it. Maybe Portugal's working on Brazil. In that case, you can go to the Caribbean. Or you can switch it up. You can still colonize in places they're colonizing in. You'll get two colonial nations there later instead of one. And of course, you will be fighting the nations that you border over in Africa, in the Ivory Coast, Cape of Good Hope, and the Zanzibar trade nodes as well. Basically, the old trade companies before you could trade company everything. And you will be trade companying everything that you conquer over in Africa. The entirety of Tunis, the entirety of Safi, except for the Tafilal area, which contains the gold mine in Tafilal. You will be trade companying everything in the Ivory Coast, everything in the Cape of Good Hope, and in Zanzibar. Like I said, you don't care about the inland trade nodes. And of course, you will be hopping along Africa to the furthest provinces you can until you reach India and the East Indies and Southeast Asia, where you will continue to expand over there in the same fashion like in Africa, basically focusing on the old trade companies. And then once you have three colonists, once you lock the third one from expansion with one of these guys you're going to be in africa with the other one you're going to be in southeast asia and with the other one you're going to be establishing colonial nations in the new world like i said everything south of mexico by now you might or might not know how colonization works you can check out the portugal guide as well that i have that goes into colonization as well but that's pretty much the expansion you're going to be doing in my case here i'm going to spy on congo next take all the ivory coast provinces from them I'm going to spy on benin take the stuff from them and then once we have all those nations unlocked I'll just continue to colonize the empty provinces, which haven't been colonized yet. After I establish Colombia over here, I'm gonna go for Mexico, get a nation going there, fight the natives. Then I'm gonna go to Brazil, La Plata. I might even hop to the Caribbean, even though Portugal is already there, but you already know. And after this point, like I said, you should have Portugal, Aragon, and Naples. And if you got lucky, you might have Burgundy or just the Lowlands. In Europe and in North Africa, you're gonna continue to expand in the same regions we've already been expanding in. Basically, you're gonna continue pummeling Morocco, taking the coastline and the gold mine from them you're gonna continue beating up tunis taking everything in the tunis trade node you don't really care about alexandria just yet or you might not care about it all game i do recommend focusing mainly on the, the genoa valencia sevilla safi and tunis trade nodes in the region of the mediterranean you can take venice too of course you should be doing this even if you don't care that much about europe if you do care about europe you're gonna be fighting france too you're gonna be fighting these guys up here later you might be fighting england but of course that's all up to you and and up to your experience level but you're gonna continue to expand in the maghreb and in italy mainly and maybe in france as well by this point you should have a fairly nice economy i'm making three ducats right now but of course i have a massive army with seven cannons and a bunch of forts although income won't be a problem anymore we got a gold mine in la mancha we'll be getting another one in tafilal and we'll soon start getting massive massive amounts of income from trade the early game is the only part where we're gonna be a little short on cash but even then then it's not a problem. I've been building so much buildings up until this point. You should, of course, be doing the same. I have marketplaces in all the center of trade provinces, lots of production buildings in the high value trade node provinces, and that's pretty much the only two buildings I've been building. Of course, you're going to do the same along with manufactories later. Castile also starts off with one monument, the El Escorial in Madrid, which is a really, really good monument, especially for the tariffs and treasure fleet income, but the gov cap as well. You will be focusing on upgrading it whenever you can. We will acquire two. Two more monuments militarily, the Alhambra and the Eid Benadou. Once again, excellent monuments that you'll focus on upgrading. And once you annex Portugal, you'll inherit the Bellum Tower as well. Another super strong monument. You should focus on upgrading all four of them whenever you can. For our first idea group, we took exploration and expansion ideas. Obviously, those are the only two picks, so to say, when starting off as Castile. For your third idea group, you don't really need any of these ideas. Of course, you can take any one of them that you want to. Quantity would be pretty good for establishing establishing lots of armies in lots of various places so one for Europe one for Africa maybe a couple in the new world then you're going to be sending them to India and Southeast Asia so you can definitely go with quantity if you want although you will be getting a very high force limit from your colonial nations so there you go that's one suggestion for your third idea group quantity if you don't want to go with quantity you can go diplo or influence something like that basically anything you want you can take for your next idea groups exploration and expansion are the most important in my opinion so for my third idea group I'd go with quantity and then maybe i'd go with influence or diplo for my fourth one although it really changes based on your goals if you want to get into europe if you only want to colonize the new world if you want to colonize the old world as well it's pretty much
much up to you. This is what we took for our first three government reforms. For your tier four government reform, you're going to take meritocratic recruitment. For tier five, you can go with general estates, then swap to this when absolutism comes around. Swap back if you max out over 100 absolutism. For tier six, you can go with Latasse Moi. And for tier seven, you can go with political absolutism. But once again, you can swap to this if you max out over 100 absolutism. And of course, later you will be forming the nation of Spain diplomatically. Make sure not to feed Aragon more than 40 provinces. And of course, you will be integrating Naples later. If you got Burgundy, you may inherit them through the horse event. If not, you're going to annex them manually. You will have to deal with the Dutch revolt. If you don't move your capital to the lowlands, if you move your capital here, make sure to move your trade capital back to Sevilla. It really is up to you. And of course, you will be keeping around Portugal for a very, very long time, at least until you finish colonizing everything. So they build colonies for you and then you'll annex Portugal as well. And like I said, around the 1490s, your game should look a little something like this. If you're not that confident in your abilities or if you're not sure if your game is going to go like mine, this save file is available for all YouTube members in the Save Games Discord channel and you can continue playing as Castile from this date forward. Let me know in the comments below what's the next nation that I should do a guide on. If you want to watch me do stuff like this live, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash the Red Hawk Live. And if you want to catch up on stuff from over there, you can subscribe to the second channel. Link is in the description. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like. It really helps out a lot. And if you want to see more guides like this, or more U4 videos in general, definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. And you can become a member today and join the Discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.